standard operating procedure for starting this old beast has been um, one solid can of ether. I think we're going to try to fix that today with a cat's ether injector. Sixteen was the record version. Yeah, all right, buddy. Here we go. Okay. A couple of modifications have been done. Ordinarily, the air cleaner would be right over here. This one, I've installed the turbo and a set of jake brakes on it. So, found a scrap engine somewhere that had the uh, 25B, or I'm sorry, 25A jakes. The Jacobs brake sets on top of the head and actually pushes down on the exhaust valve. So. It eliminates the compression in the cylinder. That's how a Jacobs brake actually works. So, anybody who says they have a Jake brake on their Cummins and it's like a 5.9, you're actually putting a potato in the pipe. It plugs it off. Real Jakes decompressionize the cylinder. This was a water cooled intake. The actual little mini radiator that sets in here has a hole in it, so this is just one big open area. The crossover pipe and the turbo. I would have to look back at my notes to see what turbo I used. It's a Switzer. Uh, it's probably up there on that tag. But uh, the manifold and everything, like I said, came off of a uh, 350 horse uh, Cummins. So normally these things were uh, pretty anemic. They're still pretty anemic even after that turbo is on here. But this thing weighs in to 35,000 pounds. One modification that you can do to get a little bit more out of them is what they call the dual fuel mod. It's this line right here. You'll find two little plugs down in the head. You're going to go for the upper one on the front here. And then uh, I run a 4A in line. You can also run a 6A in line. And 4, 4A and a 6A in also equates to like a 4JIC. So it'd be a 4JIC to eighth inch pipe plug here. And 6, 6A in would be the uh, same as a 6JIC. So picked it up a little bit. The jigs are really, really handy. If you got one of these trucks, as you can see, I cut out the hood. Uh, and elevated it, kind of a scab job. I was in a hurry because I needed the truck for a job and I couldn't really run down the road with the hood flapping in two pieces. So, in order to put the turbo on, this can here was mounted up in here on the side of the manifold. So I had to move it over and put it on the actual firewall itself. Kind of made a mailbox post bracket down here from scratch, mounted it in. The horns themselves got moved over and a couple other lines had to be moved around. Uh, well worth your time to put the turbo modification on. Well worth your time to put the Jake brake mod on. These trucks are juice brakes or air over hydraulic, which is a common problem. Um, you're constantly playing with the brakes, constantly bleeding them out. So when you're rolling down the road at 35,000 pounds, you really want to be able to stop. So air brakes is a good modification, but that'll cost you about four or 6,000 bucks. 
Today I'm going to try to put a uh, ether injector on so that it won't take three monkeys and two men to start the thing. On this side over here, <clears throat> this is what's left of an earlier um, ether injection system. I have no idea how they've had it scabbed in here. We're going to start from scratch and, and go all new. Probably put my fitting in here. Uh, a lot of these old manifolds will have a, a port that you can use for that reason. So, see what we can get into. A little embarrassing story. Uh, these things are really, really hard to start in some cases. The military had what's called flame heater on it, which was pressurized diesel fuel and a heating element. In the original configuration on these were non-turbo, non naturally aspirated. So the air cleaner, like I said, was over here. And there's a big pass-through hole here for the pipe. Uh, the singe marks here that you see in the burnt line here, I needed the truck one night and uh, so we actually succumbed to having a full-blown weed burner, the big torch system, sitting here heating up this intake. We, of course it was about 30, 25, 30 degrees at the time, so desperate times call for desperate measures. Yes, I practically set my intake on fire trying to get it to fire up and run, uh, but when you need it fast, you need it. So. Uh, like I said, the old ether systems over here, like I said, most of it's gone. It's been cannibalized when these things go through DRMO or surplus. And then when I put this manifold on and turboed it, I ended up having to change out this crossover pipe. The original naturally aspirated manifold will come through here and pop up. It's a much longer, bigger tube. Thankfully, the scrap engine I had had most of the parts on it that I needed to, uh, to do for the conversion. So we're going to find a place to mount that ether system over here. Those ether cans from CATS, they need to mount straight up and down because it's a liquid that actually will go into the injection um, the injection valve when you push the button inside the cab and then it goes in a short tube. And like I said, we're probably going to try to use this here so it showers down on all the cylinders. I could use this guy down here as well if need be, but um, chances are I want to spray it in here so it hits all the cylinders at the same time and equally. So otherwise, we're resorting back to flooding the system like we demonstrated a few minutes ago. Okay, it's been a couple weeks and off and on start. Got the bracket put in place, ether can put in place, ran the wires inside the cab, ran a little tube around here. On these fittings, there's usually a little divot beat into one little end or the other. That divot indicates where the actual nozzle is. So the nozzle goes in and the divot will be on the underside here indicating that the nozzle sprays downward. So if you're installing one of these kits, make sure you Pay attention to which side that little divot's on, otherwise your nozzle might be spraying upwards and defeating the purpose. So, like I said earlier, this truck, uh, these old 855s are good, but they're vastly underpowered. When I got a hold of this one, one of the first things I did is ended up finding another old 855 that had a turbo on it, robbed the manifolds off of it, robbed the button for the uh, and I uh, also found a set of Jake brakes, which I think I mentioned last time. Jake's, uh, that's imperative. If you're going to have one of these old trucks, this thing weighs in. It's an 816 wrecker. Weighs in at 36,000 pounds. The Jake brake on that 5-speed, you need it. It uh, really does a good job of woeing this up. Otherwise, the air over hydraulic brakes are <laughs> vastly inadequate. Alright, just screwed the ether bottle down. I keep it unscrewed when I'm not using it because this thing's been sitting for a week. I don't want to leak this off. This canister alone is about 50 bucks. temperature is about 24, 25 degrees, not 30. So it's cold. It's a lot colder than I thought it was. We'll let it warm up. Charge the batteries back up. We'll go from there. But I don't know how much ether is actually in that old can of ether. So it might be a contributing factor. I know the timing's probably off in this old bird too. But either way, it's installed and it works. So 
Good deal.